I know I was going to release a video next about editing photos, but I am saving that for another time. I have begun on that project, but times have changed and I felt this was a necessary time for this. Please bear with me if this is a lengthy video for you. I want you to share this video and feel free to comment down below. Please, nothing is politically involved with this, it's from human being to human being. Classic, elegant, smooth, fun, thunderous, these adjectives and many more could be used for the sport of bowling. I'm thinking in a time like now is the perfect time to write about something I'm so passionate for. Granted, I may not have become professional in my career, but I have major accomplishments and a few that still elude me. But now more than ever, it's starting to make me appreciate something more when it's taken from you. At first, I wasn't sure how to make a video on bowling. It took something very drastic to help me convene on this subject. We are several weeks into this process of quarantine with the coronavirus. But I'll be damned if it doesn't help people appreciate what's important in life. Do I have anxiety? Yes. Am I panicking about some things? To some extent, yes. But a lot of those have been uh, convened and basically things are starting to roll and people are establishing a new normal. But it's human nature to feel this right now, especially among the crisis we have going on. Enough about that for now. I grew up bowling from a young age of six years old. There are many people I've met along the way who have helped shape me to get to where I am today in the sport of bowling. Those relationships have grown into friends and friends into family, and among that group, I married one of them. Bowling is much more than a sport. It is about being a part of a community. Some may say it's just a game, but it's much more than that. It's a part of life. It's a gathering, a routine, and many other facets that intertwine. I, like many, was not even expecting what was about to be bestowed upon us. In the sport of bowling and many other sports, it establishes the strength of bond between achievement and camaraderie. In times like these, it is more important than ever to keep in touch with individuals. Solitude is a lonely beast that no one wants to tackle alone. But fear not, the world hasn't ended and we are still the same people whom we were prior. We have adapted to some extent, but our true hearts are still in the same spot as they were before. It just takes something catastrophic like this to bring people together. In the short time of being a part of this, it's made me check up on people that I may not talk to as much, but know this, I'm always there to talk to. But now is the time for our thunder. Bowling has helped through many ups and downs throughout life. It's my soothing waterfall to help calm the soul. It's been pretty cool so far to see the similes with life coinciding with the sport of bowling. I remember the drives early Saturday morning, my mom's purple two-door Cavalier riding to the K.I. Sawyer lanes and being so excited to have this opportunity to have the extracurricular activities be available to me. I remember on the way through uh, listening to the radio station, uh, it was Casey Kasem every Saturday morning and listening to that and driving uh, kind of coincided with everything, um, just part of the memories. I remember getting so excited for the trophies at the end of the year. We had our banquet at the lanes in the back of the hall with tables set up. All the Yaba patches and trophies, which I still have, with all the accomplishments are still viewed to this day. Although being young, I remember bowling next to Bill Wallamacki with his straight ball and thinking, man, he strikes with a lot of power. I wish I could do that, but I kept working at it. Then the KI Sawyer base closed. <laughs> now what? Some time went by and I don't remember all the details, but I'm sure it wasn't good. Then my next vivid memories come into play. They opened the lanes on Saturday at the Gwyn Inn. I remember being super pumped about bowling again. I have several great memories from there as well. I'm so glad that Tammy Kavarik, John Kavarik, and others helped uh, get the youth bo league bowling again. I remember bowling with my sisters, Autumn and Sam. I also met JR and Bobby Joe. The thing about going in was all manual with overhead projectors to write down the scores. Many times as a family we would go down to the lanes and practice. I remember with my stepdad teaching me the basics, introducing me to how handicap works. He would also have my sister Autumn and I bowl against him and try to beat him. Then became eligibility and being too old for bowling in the youth league. Again, now what? A year or so went by, then we finally had the option to sign a waiver and bowl in the adult league. I was so excited for this option. I remember bowling side by side with the adult men's league and thinking this was pretty cool to start learning from. Gwynn was a full house. There I met people like Don Lanay, my soon to be stepdad, 
John Bulwark, Dave Kangas, Dennis Bray, Fred Knees, George Bones, and many others who I grew up trying to bowl with and learn from. I was getting help from all of them. The lanes were tough being in old wood lanes and being oiled via a broom and spray bottle by Rick Herrick. I also got my first ball drilled to my hand. The brand was a hammer bowling ball called the Nasty Nail. Then I graduated high school. Again, now what? The future was again uncertain. Then I got an opportunity to sub on Friday Night Leagues in Ishpeming at Country Lanes, which is now called River Rock Lanes and Banquet Center. Here until present is where my longest tenured position and place to bowl occurred. I was introduced to Steve Briggs, and the two of us created our bowling team a year later. We had Todd Mannanen, Jamie Parker, Paul Mannanen, Chris Dankowski as our main team. We eventually expanded out and started bowling in other leagues in addition to this league where I met Sarah Waters in which she joined with Todd, Paul, and myself to bowl Wednesday nights. After a while and being in college we realized it was too much to bowl in multiple leagues and we cut back to just one league and very partial still to this day, Friday Night League. From there, life started to get going and feeling pretty good about myself and others. Then it all fell apart. My stepdad, Tony, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Everything I knew was shattered. I remember the night staying up crying and praying for everything to come right. Many things started to all mix together and this is where I mean friends became family even more so than anything prior. Tony began teaching me finite details here and there to help strengthen my game further. I remember being in the hospital with him as our family was starting to evaluate everything going on and this is where I started to learn how to run the league. At the time, Tony was running our Friday night league. He was teaching me the ins and outs of what it took to run the league. Again, it was another road bump, but bowling was there to help push me through the unknown time. Then I met April Corpy, with whom many of us started to travel to tournaments in the midst of everything going on. Tony, my mom, myself, and many others were traveling to tournaments uh, every th everywhere from Sault Ste. Marie to Willow Creek in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and now we even do state tournaments that rotate from Oshkosh to Appleton to Green Bay to Madison. We travel quite a bit. April, my mom, Tony, and myself taking the Tahoe down to Willow Creek Lanes and cracking jokes the whole time. Everyone was having a lot of fun. Then something happened after that. April introduced me to Brianna. Brianna spent most of the time hanging out with us and we became closer. Brianna and I started to date. A few months went by and when Brandon Westman and I were standing in our 4th Street apartment, I said to him, that girl is going to be the one that I'm going to marry. Later that December, I proposed to Brianna at the bowling alley in front of everyone on league. Again, everything was getting better. Then my stepdad passed away. We were all crushed. Again, now what? I remember telling my mom the only thing I could do was go bowl. At the time, I didn't know how to explain it or what the urge was, but I went and bowled that following Friday. It was a rough go at it, but it helped start the process of healing. It was all a part of inner peace and knowing that I had something there to help soothe and push forward. Bowling has always been there for me as a uh, emotional support in my book, whether it be uh, tough going or the sense of high achievement. A few years passed as I kept pushing on, I began getting frustrated, watching people who were younger than I was bowling 300s and multiple others getting them, but not me. In that time frame, I had a few 700 series, five 288 games, multiple 600 series, and bowling in many other leagues. On Sunday night leagues, it was my stepmom, Gina, Brianna, myself, and another couple who rotated. I remember bowling strike for strike with Don North, all front nine strikes for both of us. Don North just threw a 300. I remember thinking how awesome this would be if we threw 300 side by side. Then I finished with another 288. So damn close. I remember having split feelings. I was super ecstatic for Don North, but really mad that I had yet again come so close. Fast forward another few years to Willow Creek Lanes. This was when Willow Creek Lanes was in its prime. Everyone was bowling bad, and Lord knows that I've had my fair share of bad games there. Across the board, except for one, my dear friend, Chris Stankowski. The first three games, both of us struggled mainly from our form due to how sticky the approach was, and by sticky, I mean I could not slide at all, and that is a huge part of my game. Then I told Chris Dankowski to put a sock over part of his shoe. The thing that happened next was a crazy feeling. He started to bowl more natural and went on a crazy run. As the third game rolled around, I started adding in his handicap and looking at the top score. 
frantically in my mind saying, come on, Chris, come on, man, just one at a time. Each shot was dead on. After he threw his last ball, I remember going up and cheering him on and picked him up to celebrate, not knowing what he just did. He just put himself in first place for the singles in the Willow Creek Classic. As a huge accomplishment. In my mind, that was a true turning point of thinking that my time will come. A year or so went by when five of us went up to bowl in a tournament in Berga. Tammy Kavart, John Kavart, George Bones, Chris Dankowski, and myself, the whole way up there, we were all joking about how fun and what we should be doing other than going to the tournament. We should be fishing. <laughs> As a funny name, we put that down as a team name. We all were bowling pretty well. Then the last game arrived. I rifled off the first seven strikes in a row, but again, I could not finish. I ended up with a 247 my last game. I thought for sure I let everyone down with not bowling a 300. Everyone finished strong, and you know what? We won the tournament. We all got jackets for it. It was another accomplishment. Then again, I started thinking, now what? When is it gonna happen for me? Moving forward, it started getting a little rough again, but this time I started motivating myself. I took a step back and went back with basics to tweak things here and there. One of the things in bowling that they tell you is, if you don't know where you're at, start over. And basically everything that I did was change my hand position, made sure that my feet were in the right movement, and I worked on it for many seasons in a row. April 22nd, 2016, the last week of bowling for the season before our roll-offs and banquet. Again, another year gone and another season coming up empty. I remember my mom and my mom's boyfriend, Don, heading out of town. The first two games were decent, but I was starting to get aggravated due to the end of the year. The last game, I started off with a front five, then seven, then nine. Heading into the last frame, I thought to myself, I have been down this road before. I had a few composure moments, the last two balls. I remember being really lightheaded with all the pressure mounting up. Then I threw the second to last ball. I was like, okay, this was uncharted territory for me. The last ball I moved one board to the left to account for me throwing a slow ball on my last ball. I threw the last ball with weak knees and being dizzy, thinking I would be heartbroken if this didn't strike. Then it hit the pocket. Boom! Thunderous shot. I did it! 300! Finally! In what seemed like an eternity, I turned around and let out a primal scream. <laughs> All the years of bowling, I got what I had been chasing. I instantly started crying after the scream with mixed emotions. I wish my mom was here to see this. I wish my stepdad was here to see this. I wish my mom's fiance was here to see this. I wish my dad was here to see this. But immediately it went to being overflowed with joy. Still to this day, I remember my mom responding via text after calling her, saying it was 13 years to the week Tony had bowled his last one. I remember all the hugs and cheers I got from everyone that night. My dad and several other family members called and congratulated me face to face with massive milestones. I've had several other achievements since then, a 299 and then several other 279 games, more 288s. Now with my highest average ever after a few years down, but the point is persistent and patience pays off. I am truly at peace with this. I do have a current goal of an 800 series. If you truly want something and you put in the effort, eventually it will come. My last career goal, which would be an honor if it did happen, is being a part of our local Hall of Fame. I have run our league 11 out of the past 12 years and I've learned several things along the way. I run a Facebook page for our league when I try to honor those who achieve high scores for themselves to help prop them up and appreciate their dedication to the game as well. I've definitely matured in this whole process with a massive learning curve. Now, my daughter has started this journey. She's been excited to bowl on Kids League now. I'm hoping to start and grow this journey with her as well. It's awesome being in a sport to be able to teach her the fundamentals just as I did. To sum up everything going on in this crazy world, we still have each other and something to strive for at the end of the day. We just have to take smaller steps at a time like I did in bowling, as in our world crisis going on now. I want to thank everyone who has been a part of this process with me and our bowling community because of the friendships and an increase in family that has happened along the way. There are too many people to thank for all of this and to try to mention everyone would take a while, but I do thank you all for being a part of our bowling crew from league to tournaments and even to staff. Thank you all. In this time of need, feel free to reach out and I'll do my best to help get through this tough time we have. Everything has its ups and downs. We may be in crisis mode now, but it's who is around that helps to get you through. I'm also extending this out to anyone who watched this video. Feel free to like and comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and thanks for being a part of the Upermo channel family. 
Catch you on the flip side.